There we go. Good morning, hacksters. Let's see. Uh, not quite that yet. So we have a package from ages ago that I have always failed at opening. And it's, I guess, not a failure, but uh, my amazing colleague and friend, Jessica, and I were planning to open this together. We've been planning this for ages, uh, but things happened, as you know. And so uh, it's been sitting on the shelf for a million years, and it's from Brown Dog Gadgets. These people are like, super cool. We're going to crack it open today. Let me tell you a little bit about them. First, they make these things called crazy circuits that are Lego compatible electronics. And they make a complimentary, oh my goodness, look, it's an owl. Robot owls, my favorite thing, amazing. Um, so yeah, they make not only Lego compatible um, modules, such as, for example, these 555 timers that they sent us a long time ago um, that I have yet to play with, but oh my goodness. So this one is for a through-hole one, and this one is for a surface mount one. They have both. And then the silver stuff you see on here is a uh, conductive maker tape, which is a special kind of conductive tape, which uh, not only is it incredibly flexible and durable, unlike regular copper tape, it doesn't fold and stuff. And uh, let me pull some up this off for you. Ah, yes. You can just sort of flex it every which way. It doesn't break. Uh, and the adhesive is conductive as well. So it's conductive through the z-axis. We've talked about this a lot before because it makes me really excited. Um, in fact, we have prior videos about it, uh, which are linked in the description below. First up, there's this maker tape one specifically. Uh, and then also a simple emotive origami bot that just responds to uh, audio data with a different mood color, depending on you know what mood you send it and how you're feeling. So uh, they've been posting a lot of cool projects recently about uh, various Lego and maker tape objects. Oh my goodness, look at this. OK, I have to check that one out later. Uh, they made a cute little DJ booth with a micro bit and some of their own projects. You should really check out their Twitter if you want to find some cool uh, Lego-related electronics projects. So cool. Uh, so they make, yes, these Lego things and this maker tape, and we're going to open this box from ages ago because it's time. It's finally time. Oh, I wasn't showing you that. Um, I have somehow closed my... There we go. So yeah, um, here's our Twitter. Uh, the little DJ booth, super cool with a micro bit on it. Then we have this little clothespin piano, which is what I was just freaking about, out about. Look at that! With a micro bit. Ah, it's so cute. Uh, and you can see that they're using their Lego module there as well. Amazing. Uh, I'm just going to like that for later. <laughs> and yeah, uh, here are our prior videos about maker tape uh, and about the simple emotive origami companion bot, which I hope to do more of that soon. All right, so enough of that. Let's get on to the unboxing. So I'm going to put my face away. And we're going to look at my desk. So as you see, this is open. It's just because we weren't sure who it was from at the start. And so we opened it up to see what's inside. But uh, we, A, that was months ago. And B, uh, we didn't really take everything out. So now is the grand moment. I've been waiting for this for literally months. OK, so we have some packing tape, which is recyclable. Hooray. Oh, look at this. Okay, so A, we have, um, so this, oh, it's all the eighth inch stuff. Wow. Four little rolls of eighth inch maker tape. I told you about the maker tape a second ago. This is that three axis conductive tape. Um, and the deal here is that it comes in both quarter inch and eighth inch widths. So uh, this stuff will go a really long way. Holy crap. We have a bunch of this. We've got to put it to use. That means I really have to start. I have no excuse not to start using these 555s. I've done some LED stuff with them below just to try it out, and it worked great. Um, these things have eight pins, obviously, so I'm going to have to hook those up and use a bunch of this tape because it's just, it's just a thing, you know? So here, this is... Ooh! Oh! Well, obviously, I have to... Oh, they're two different ones. Wow. OK, so we have two robotics kits in here. And also, you can see the rest of my terribly messy desk, as well as some stickers from Aj. Um, shout out to our friend Aj. He's often on the streams here, and uh, he does robotics. But anyway, 
Uh, so we have a deluxe box kit. Woo! So let's. So these come in super nice little storage boxes. Wow. Um, and there's some projects that come with this. We've got play tones with a touch board, push to light, battery holder, momentary push button, jumbo LED. You've got a little circuit diagram here, so you can learn that. We've got a switch here. You've got the LED. An LED is a light emitting diode. So it's a diode symbol with two little arrows coming off for the light. I love how visual this is. And then there's a little battery. Um, standard schematics, easy to learn with no soldering. Uh, play tones, you've got a little speaker board, looks like a little piezo buzzer, and a touch sensor. Uh, I'm curious to take a look at that one. Change colors, you've got a little RGB LED. Oh yeah, uh, cool thing about RGB LEDs, you've got uh, three LEDs, but in one package. So you see there's only one little surface mount LED there. That's because they have all three uh, semiconductor uh, diode bits in one package and you can control them. It has three pins coming off uh, for control. Each of them gets its own pin. These are unlike your NeoPixel programmable ones, which would have one data pin, one power pin, and one ground pin, and you have to program them. These ones, you just apply voltage to each of the pins if you want it to turn on, and then they all have a ground pin. That's common. Oh wait, no, that's power. Okay, so uh, they each get so, um, connected to the board through their ground pin, and that is what allows it to flow. So I guess you connect that to ground uh, in order to make the LED turn on. And if it's high, then no current flows, and the LED stays off. Push to light. We already looked at this one, maybe. Oh, there's two of them. One is red, one is black, but they are the same. Huh? <laughs> What's on the back? Ooh, look at this. Oh, okay. So they have two different uh, info things. One of them tells you about LEDs, and the other one tells you about push buttons. I wonder if they're color coded. Yeah, look at this. Uh, your input here is a red one, and your output here is a black one. That's my guess. Let's see. Playtones. This is an output, and it's black. This one is also an output. Ha! OK, I cracked the code. Let's look at some actual physical things, though. We'll take a look at these in a second, because um, I'm impatient. OK, cool. One, two, three, four servos. We could make a whole robot with this. Oh, hence the robotics kit descriptor, I guess. <laughs> um, if you watch this show much at all, then you know that my uh, great passion is companion bots. and. With these little push buttons, there's plenty of ways to interact. Uh, you've got some jumbo LEDs. You've got an RGB, oh, blue, green. Oh, blue, green, red. So they've labeled the pins on these RGB LEDs. Let me get a little more focus for you. Oh, no, we'll do that in a sec. And then over here we have, oh, little screw terminals. So you can connect whatever, including power sources. We have a couple of, um, USB cables, that's really nice. This is like USB mini. I never have these around. Um, wow, more Midgear tape and some conductive thread. Uh, this stuff is really cool. You can make sewable circuits with it. So in theory, you could very easily make a, uh, especially if you had one of these smaller modules, um, or if you were using, for example, these, you could embed them in your clothing, have a little switch that you sew on. Another cool thing about these is that these, um, these little holes are not only Lego compatible, but they're also sewing compatible. You can sew to these, uh, you know, and it'll securely hold the module in place as well as conducting to it. So you could use maker tape for that, or you could use conductive thread. And they've included some in the kit. Very nice. Here we have what looks like an Arduino Pro Mini, or no, not a Mini even. Uh, what type of Arduino is this? Mm -mm -mm. Someone who's more familiar with all the different perm permutations of Arduino can tell us, but it looks like one of the Arduino Pro models to me. Um, here's your little USB connector. You've got a reset button. You've got some little feedback for uh, receiving and transmitting data, power. Uh, some little servo connectors. Cool. So they each have common uh, five volts in and ground out. And then you have the pins labeled that they're going to be on. So you've got three digital pins and two analog pins that they're connected to. They're all labeled. 
and you just plug the uh, servos into here with their little three pin connector like so. Um, servos, generally these three pin connectors can be a little confusing because they don't have just red and black for uh, voltage. So you uh, plug it in like this. The brown one is for ground, red is for power, and then uh, the other one is for data. There's really enough, I think there's enough in here to build two different robots uh, that would be identical. So obviously I have to send half of these components to Jessica and we have to do a live build sometime or maybe like a recorded build. But yeah, Jessica, it's coming for you. So Martin says, uh, looks easy. Let's try to build Hector from the movie Saturn 3. I'm not familiar with that one, but I'll have to look it up after. It sounds really cool. Uh, we have one piece of Lego backing in here, which I can't get out because I'm bad with my hands. <laughs> but um, at the same time, I also have this old one, so I can put that together. We also have an extra divider. Let's see if there's anything under here. Oh, look at this. Custom laser cut servo attachments. You can make wheels out of this. You could attach, uh, what's that stuff with the little, I think it's some kind of Lego, uh, has these little cross pieces that are sort of bars that you can connect together. So you could totally make, of course it's Lego. This whole thing is Lego compatible. So yeah, you can make a little Lego compatible robot with this. And then these pieces are servo holders that you can uh, screw in the servos so that they get attached securely, but you can also attach those uh, structural structural bars. Clearly I need to order more Lego so that we can make some really rad bots. So uh, these are probably positional servos, not continuously rotated. So they can't just go around and around and around like you would use for robot wheels. Although I looked them up, uh, FS90MR Phytech. Let's find out. FS ninety MR servo Vitek. Micro Metal Gear. Oh, it is it is a continuous rotation servo. Okay, cool, perfect. So um, that means that you can use them as wheels. They can go around and around and around, and you can program them that way. Uh, if you're not familiar with servo motors, there are two kinds. <clears throat> I mean, there's a lot of kinds, but the main difference is that uh, some of them, you can, uh, you give them a speed, and they go around at that speed, and then some of them, you give them a number, and that uh, sends it to a particular degree position from 0 to 180. And that can be very confusing and surprising if you think you have one type of servo and you have the other one and suddenly your robot is doing some kind of exorcist thing because it's going really fast instead of going all the way around. And yeah, uh, we have things about the basics of using maker tape. Cool. And uh, crazy circuits as well. Cool. Oh, so they've marked the negative poles in white and you know which way to connect them by color coding. Lots of color coding in here, it's very cool. Um, oh, and documentation about the touchboard, including a pinout, fantastic. Uh, oh, so maybe there's two different ones. In this one, uh, we have two robotics boards with those servo connectors, but there is apparently also a touchboard that you can get. Okay, let's open up the other one. I'm on a little bit of a time crunch. Jay jumped in to say, did I hear Lego robot? Yes, you did. Jay is the one who sent the stickers I sent, showed you earlier. He's like, yeah. Thanks, Jay. Okay, so deluxe set. Uh, we have, ooh, an invention board in this one, uh, as well as your robotics board. Get creative. We've got some little project cards again, play tones and change colors your maker tape and your conductive thread. Oh, it was diagonal, I nearly had it. Oh no. Okay, at least we got this out. So we do have another piece of Lego, there we go. Uh, backing, battery holder information, always on. That's probably your simplest one for hardware, just connecting a battery to an LED. Push buttons for input, push to light, 
Fading LED, that's a good one. Um, uh, there's a special blink slash fade board, apparently. Uh, attach components. Oh, yeah. So here are those little screw terminals we talked about before. And they've got a resistor and an LED in. So you can attach arbitrary components as well as like a battery pack. That's these guys. Uh, push to light again. A stoplight. So you've got a slide switch switching between a red and green LED and a little schematic as well as a physical diagram. Push to light. I think we already went through all of these. Fantastic. Okay, so we've got a huge assortment of jumbo LEDs over here. Ooh, and some little surface mount LEDs as well. I wonder what color this one would be. Very curious to find out. It's got a built-in resistor as well. 100 ohms. Yeah. If you're not familiar, uh, so resistor color codes you might know, uh, and they tell you what value the resistor is based on these sort of numbered, number to color uh, correspondences. But on surface mount ones, uh, it's the same code, except instead of colors, they just use numbers. So uh, 101 means a one, a zero, and then multiply that by 10 to the first, which is 10, so you get 100. Or uh, my shorthand for that is just to be like a one, a zero, and then add one zero onto it. Uh, so it's 100 ohms. Here we have our board. Oh yeah, and it's the invention board. This looks like a teensy. Oh, this is totally a teensy. <laughs> um, with a, their own custom breakout. I'm not sure, this is like a 3.1 or a 3.2. These things are great. You can do all kinds of awesome music stuff with these. I'm out of focus. <laughs> um, yeah, they're really powerful. They're low latency and they have built in, baked in capacitive touch sensing abilities. So it makes it really easy to do that. Super fab. Uh, fab. Let's check these out. We've got a large push button this time. Very satisfying. Um, another RGB LED module, little buzzer, a couple of screw terminals, uh, another big push button. Ooh, various inputs, yeah. So we've got the smaller momentary tactile switches, and then you've also got a couple of switches, switches, slide switches. Cool. And then we have a blink fade board like we saw in the projects. So uh, this will, you hook it up to a light or whatever and it will like go at different speeds. And then we have a bunch of uh, power modules for coin cells. Ooh, and then we also have a very fancy USB cable with micro USB and a little AAA battery holder so that you can power your projects if they take uh, more power. So. These both give you three volts, actually. A little um, CR2032 coin cell battery will give you three volts, but it won't last very long. And then these will uh, give you the same amount of voltage, but uh, they can usually provide more current and for a longer amount of time. So you can use the same uh, circuit. You can prototype with a coin cell, and then if you want it to be longer lasting, or especially for like wearable things, uh, you can add that. And then you could easily remove it if you want to wash it, for example, if you connect it via a screw terminal, just unscrew it, and there you go. All right. So thank you very much, Brown Dog Gadgets. This is one that I'm going to be playing with for a long time. Uh, and let me go back to my face here. All right. I'm going to see if we have any last comments before we wrap up. Uh, Jay says, my first robot was a Lego mecha that I made out of random Lego blocks. Incredible and incredibly on brand for you. David Bates says, which kit is this? I'm browsing their site to try and find pricing is, etc. Now, what I regret with this uh, kit is that unfortunately we left it to sit on the shelf for ages because we were trying to find a time to do it together because that was the idea. And I'm opening it now because we don't know what the future holds uh, and it's been ages. And so it's possible this kit may not exist anymore, but all the, the same components do exist on the Brown Dog Gadgets website. You can communicate with them through their Twitter. I very much recommend checking it out for the projects, if nothing else. Uh, but then also they're very 
responsive and cool people, and I'm sure they'd be happy to help you out uh, and help you find some kind of Lego robotics project that uh, you could do. So let's check that out one more time. Uh, again, all the links to this are in the description to this video. You just scroll down, you will find it. Um, that's browndoggadgets.com. They've got a ton of wonderful tutorials with the conductive thread as well as the maker tape. And then check out their Twitter for more. All right, uh, that's it for me. Hope you have a marvelous rest of your week and we'll see you soon. Have fun.